Hey. How are you? Hi. I'm John. How are you doing, John? Good, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Ladies, go ahead. Hi. Hi. You say your name. Oh, I'm Julia. Nice to meet you. I'm, and I'm Jasmine. Nice to meet y'all. Nice to meet you. So, uh, you're home in Texas? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm in Liberty and they're in Brookside. So okay. luckily we could yeah. do this this way. Um, I was telling Jasmine that we're going to start with uh, marinating of the steak that okay. you got. And we're not actually going to add that to the quesadillas, but we're just going to run through how to marinate it. And then next time you make some quesadillas or you want to do some sort of south of the border uh, steak for your family, we can do that. Hello. Hi. How are you? He just woke up from a nap. <laughs> that's uh Bodhi, right? Yeah, that's Bodhi. <laughs> awesome. And you have a you have a real tiny one, don't you? Yeah, she's ten months. She's ten nine. months. Nice. All right. Well, uh, if you're ready, we can get down to it. Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. All right, let me close this door. All right. So I am going to show you how to make a super, super, super simple marinade that has a whole lot of flavor. It breaks down the, the uh, protein. We're gonna start with flank steak today. And uh, I hope you have a blender nearby. Blender, yeah, we can get one. Okay. Me and Kalia are prepared. All right, beautiful. All right, so you don't even have to grab the meat yet. I'm gonna show you how to do the marinade. It's super simple. So just, we're gonna, we don't have to cut anything really. Let's grab the blender first. I got my uh, my Vitamix. I may have borrowed this from work. <laughs> so Amanda, are you doing most of the cooking or are you making the man do it? I do most of the cooking. Yeah, all right. <laughs> That's all right. You've been playing a lot of golf, Hunter? Do what? Have you been playing a lot of golf? I play about once a week. That's really been the only thing open. So the courses have been packed. I hear you, man. I'm trying to, I tried to get on a couple of places and they actually told me last time you were in town, they even turned you down. I was like, uh-oh, I'm not getting on there. Shadow <laughs> Glenn. So. Oh, Shadow Glenn, yeah. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Super easy. You have some parsley? Parsley, yeah. Oh, so that one's cilantro. Get the no, no, it's in the same. Well, we're gonna we're gonna need both of them, so you can grab both herbs. Okay. Cilantro and parsley. Yeah, that's parsley. Now, like I said, this is gonna take no skill at all, <laughs> but lots of flavor. All right, so we ready? Yep. All right, you're gonna take like half of that bunch of parsley, so split it just like that, and just pop it at the halfway point right below where it's where they're tied together or right above where they're tied together so you just want to end up with that right there all right so just rip rip off half of it, half of it. all right and then throw that right in your blender all right then you're going to do the same thing with the cilantro take about half of it stems and all break the top off What's that? You say? Do you guys like cooking a lot? Yeah. Like to cook. I yeah. could do it for a living. <laughs> Kalia's really good at cooking eggs. Really? That was my first thing. I guys. That's said. actually uh, when I went to culinary school. There's a whole three week class dedicated to breakfast cookery. So that's a good thing to know. Mm, yeah. That's probably so, one of my favorite things to cook. I love cooking breakfast. Really? Yeah. Well, it, it's so versatile. There's so many little things you can change oh. at any point. Yeah. And it's cheap to produce too, which is great, which is uh, maybe when we get back to baseball, we can just do uh, breakfast at the stadium for the players every day. Yeah, let's do it. All right. I'll work with TJ. Yeah. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab one 
clove of garlic. You don't need the whole head, just one clove. Oh, okay. If you already have it chopped, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna, just gonna pop it in there. Yeah. So a fast way to peel it, I don't know if you know this little trick, it's like I said, we're going to do this most simple recipe. You take it, you put it on the table, you smash it with the heel of your hand. Smash it. And then you can, then the, uh, that papery outer edge will come right off. Cool. And again, this is just a marinade. So even if you have a little bit of that paper, on there still, it's gonna be fine because we're just trying to get flavor into that meat. All right, and then once you get all that off, you can throw that right in your blender too. All right. Now, now if you really like garlic, you can do two cloves, your call. I'm gonna do two on my end. Yeah. Oh, did you say put the skin in there? No, I'm saying if there's a little bit left over, don't worry about it. Oh, but okay. if, you, if you can get most of it off, that'd be fantastic. All right, so next we're gonna go with a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. Don't drink it, Hunter. Yeah, I, I love the smell of vinegar. <laughs> So quarter cup and go right on top of there. All right. All right. All right, and then we're gonna do a half cup of vegetable oil. And then you, you process that, you blend it, whatever you need to do. You clean it up off the floor if you spill it on the floor a little bit. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, just blend it up. It's that simple. A lot of people when they make marinades, they, they take time with the cutting of the garlic and the shallots, but you really don't need to do that. If you're just trying to get all that flavor in there, you're gonna blend it, it doesn't matter. All right, so just blend, blend it to oblivion. And you should just have a nice, like, liquidy paste. It looks like pesto, really. Do you need that? If you had, if it's a little loose, you just add some more of the uh, oil or vinegar. Uh, I would add. So you add a little more herbs than I did. I would add another um, like quarter cup of oil to that. Okay. All right. And then now that we have it pureed, this is where you can kind of add your own little spin to it. I'm gonna add salt and pepper. So about a teaspoon of kosher salt and a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. And then a, a traditional will have um, like red pepper flake in it, but I want to make this super kid friendly. So if you want to add a, extra, a little extra heat, red pepper flake, sriracha. I have some Cholula I'm going to throw in mine. So if I could find out where I hit it. Okay, so sorry, what did you say? You said salt? So yeah, a, a teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of black ground pepper. All right. Then if you want to add a little heat, I'm going to do a couple dashes of Cholula. All right. And then another quick pulse to get that uh, salt and pepper you mixed in. Did you say add more oil too? Uh, theirs was a little thick, so we added a little more oil. Yours looked really good and loose. I like hot sauce. You don't like it. We can keep it out. Yeah, we'll keep it out. Yeah. All 
All right, so when I'm marinating meats, I like to use like a freezer bag. I find that it in, in cap, like you can coat it around the entire piece of meat. You can fold it over. If you don't have that, you can just use like, uh, there you go, boom. Everybody's got them now. Awesome. So put the. Uh... So I got my price chopper flank steak. So do we. Beautiful, good work. Rouse. So you just take that, you place it right in the bag. Like so, and then you just pour your marinade over it. And then you don't even have, you really don't even have to get your hands dirty in this whole process other than when you picked up that flank steak and then just using the outside of the bag you can kind of massage the uh the marinade right into it and the thing that's beautiful about these things if you do this they usually have this little uh thing right here you can label what it is oh yeah Put it right, you don't have to use any extra things. You don't have, there's no question marks of what's in your fridge. So I just fold mine over. So it, it, the, the uh, marinade is all over the meat. You can squeeze a little air out of it. So it almost uh, like vacuum packs it into there. Now the vinegar in there is gonna help break down the, uh, the fibrous material in this, uh, in this flank steak and when it cooks on the grill, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I, about five minutes before we started this, I threw some on my grill. So I'm going to just show you how to cut it. Okay. You guys can, you can grill this later on tonight, but right now you can just put it right in your refrigerator. All right. So I'm going to wash my hands. I hope everybody does the same in between tasks. Hey, Bodie, how old are you, buddy? <laughs> is, is Bodie a point break reference? No, but we saw the movie after we decided he was going to be Bodie. Gotcha. Um, I don't know. We just, we just, we found the name on the internet and we just loved it. And then when, once we found out we were having a boy, yeah. we were like, all right, it's going to be That's Bodie. Awesome. That movie Very kind cool. of like it more though. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now I'm going to show you what the cooked flank steak looks like, all right? So in my world, we're all about food safety, right? Um, especially when we're serving our guests. So every single one of my employees at the stadium, if we have a knife in our hand or we're using a deli slicer, we put on a cut glove. Like no knife can go through as if you're using the knife right. So I'm going to put my cut glove on. I'm going to throw on a rubber glove so I don't get the juices all over it. And I'll show you exactly what this cooked uh, flank steak looks like. So like I said, this, this came off the grill. I cooked it to about 125 on the grill using my thermometer. I don't know if you can see it, but I got some uh, nice char on it. Nice. Yeah, it looks great. Um, I had it in the marinade for only about an hour, but you can do that marinade overnight and it's gonna be like mouth watering when you cut it or when you cook it, I'm sorry. <laughs> so the one thing about flank steak is, I'm gonna see if you can, I can get my computer down here. So there's some grains and probably when you picked up the meat, you could see it like the grain runs this way on it. Yeah. So you want to cut against that grain when you're slicing. Cause if you cut with the grain, it's going to be really chewy. So if you cut against the grain, I mean, the, the mouthfeel is so much better. So if, and then if you cut it on an angle like this, I don't know if you can really see that, but I'm coming in at an angle when I cut it. Uh-huh. 
It just gives it a nice cleaner presentation. It actually makes it look like you have more steak than you do. So when you're making something uh, like a quesadilla, you can fit less meat, but cover a lot of area. And then the, the bites won't be that big. All right? Looks so. good. Does look good. So I'm gonna cut this real quick and then we're gonna go right into making some uh, cilantro lime sour cream. Um, yeah. All right. This smells really good. And like I said, I only had mine in the marinade for about an hour. So if you keep that in for a couple hours or overnight, it's gonna be spectacular. All right, I'm losing my glove. I'm gonna switch out my cutting board. So for this cilantro sour cream, we're gonna go with, uh, Kalia, can you guess the first ingredient we need for cilantro sour cream? There you go, boom, okay, easy. We need a blender. We do not need a blender. We're gonna use uh, just a, a mixing bowl and a rubber spatula. Okay. And we're also gonna need a knife so we can cut the cilantro. And if you have um, another way to add just a little extra flavor, if you have a box grater or a micro plane, we can get some of that zest from the lime. Okay. All right. So what has been the, uh, what has been the go-to quarantine meal for everybody? I've been on the grill a lot for my, me and my kids. Yeah. Some sort of tacos. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of tacos. I've, I've done, um, I've smoked ribs a couple times. Um, I normally do the grill stuff. I, I enjoy doing smoking stuff, so. Nice. We smoked a brisket, ribs, and then she, we do the home chef. Have you heard of home chef? Yeah. Yeah, we do a lot of that. Nice. We like that. Jasmine, Kalia, how about you? What's your quarantine meal? Um, we go out. Like, 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 <laughs> all right so did everybody does everybody have a micro plane or a box grader that little extra tool i mentioned you have one of these i think we it's did. fine don't worry about it it's just a, it's a way to add a little extra flavor into the cilantro lime sour cream it's not that works so there should be like a real small box on there maybe like the smallest grade yeah that's what you want to use okay so we're gonna take one cup of the sour cream. That's not yogurt. Sour cream. Hunter, just let him eat it. Then he'll know it's not sour. Then he'll know it's not yogurt. He wants to eat it. I was going to give him some yogurt. All right, so I have mine in a stainless steel bowl. You can put in whatever you got. Usually a round vessel is the best way to go because you can get in there with a spatula. It doesn't get trapped in the edges and you can make everything really homogenous, nice and smooth, all the same color. All right. So uh, let's take some more of that cilantro that we started with. I know we took about half of it for that marinade. So why don't we take... Um, I'd say a third of what you have left. And uh, do we know how to pull the leaves off of cilantro, Kalia? Have you ever played with this stuff before? All right, I'm gonna show you a little trick. So, when it comes to cilantro, you've got, oh, I'll get a prettier one here. 
So you got cilantro here. You can pull off. If you pinch the two at the bottom, pull those off. And then towards the top, this part of the stem is very edible. So you don't even have to worry about pulling all these little leaves off the top. You can just pull that whole thing off right there. Okay. Now, if you were to, even if you want to try it right now, you can try to eat some of this versus some of this. It's not as uh, fun. All right. So let's do um, maybe five or six of the stems of these. Okay. What do you want? Because we want to have a yield of about two tablespoons of chopped cilantro when we're done. So Jasmine, have you had to uh, have you had to work? Yeah. So I uh, co-own a video production company with my sister. Okay. So we are, and we have two employees who are working from home. But Amber and I, my sister, we're still going into the office. Gotcha. Just doing a lot of virtual video content. Nice. Yeah. yeah that I'm still working, uh, you know, I, I'm supposed to work with my hands, but I've strictly been a computer guy and it's kind of driving me crazy. Yeah. And, uh, lots of revamping of recipes and taking a lot of our stadium favorites and putting them into home cook style recipes. And the Royals have been sending those out on their newsletters. So we get to share those with the community, which is pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I actually sent out a, a really nice loaded brat recipe today that we'll see. Uh, I think it's going to come out Friday in the newsletter. Cool. Yeah. So every week there's a brand new thing that you can find at the stadium that you now know you can make at home. And I believe Price Chopper is sharing all the recipes as well. Cool. Yeah. So what's the uh, Hunter? I don't know if you know this, but like, what's the Royals plans for season? Yeah. So it's everything still kind of up in the air um we really don't know anything there's been like some ideas that are being thrown around about when we're going to start playing and where we're going to start playing but they're all ideas and yeah. hopefully we can start sooner rather than later but it all depends on like the government and the restrictions and everything so we're just kind of on hold yeah so i think that we need to uh maybe help ourselves with some later projects why don't you pick about twice as much of the cilantro as you just did? That way we'll chop it all now and they'll have it for our three recipes we need it. Sound good? Perfect. So just keep picking away. Uh, yeah, on our end with Aramark at Kaufman, we're, uh, we're coming up with all sorts of plans. So uh, if we have a hundred game season or less, you know, we, we have all different scenarios that we've been working on. Mm -hmm. um, we're ready to go once we get the green light. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we do get a green light. Yeah, I know. I'm a, I'm like a huge, huge baseball dork. So <laughs> it's been my favorite sport forever. So with it not being on, I'm like twitching at night. You know. I know. Well, there. Is, well, I can't even imagine how you feel. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I'm like, I've never been home during this time of year. It's. Yeah. We're, I, I'm, we are getting a lot of like extra family time, which I'm not used to during this time of year. So. That's, that's been a blessing about all of this. I hear you, man. I, I'm there like, uh, I'm at Kaufman like 16 hours a day every day, so. Kalia and I haven't been able to see each other for like a month and a half, probably. That oh, that's good. not good. Well, at least we got to bring you together today. That's, that's fantastic. I know, this is the first time since like the beginning of March, so. Oh, wow. Shit. I don't know. So this is a true quesadilla party going on here. <laughs> Did all you right so how are we looking with our uh, cilantro coming along good you tell me when you're ready and i'm going to show you a quick little uh trick on how to cut it without cutting your fingers off yeah. all right i think we're we have this much oh that's perfect okay okay so once again i'm going to put my cut glove on 
So what one thing that I like to do, and you see a lot of, if you ever watch people uh, cut herbs, everybody has their own special way of doing it. When I cut cilantro or parsley or any of this real leafy stuff, I kind of do like a fold with it, like I'm cutting basil. So I'll try to get you as close as possible here to see what I'm doing. So I like to take it and just kind of roll it like I'm rolling a, uh, like a wrap. Just twist it up into a tube. And then I just take the knife and I make this little, uh, I make this little claw, this little barrier with my fingers. And then I put it right in front. And then I just let, I let the knife do the work and I, I place the edge of the knife against my middle finger, which is my guard. And I just go right ahead. I don't know how well you can see that what I'm doing here. <laughs> Again, I've probably, I've probably used a knife as often as hunters swung a baseball bat. So I mean, I can chop, don't do this at home, but I, I mean, I can chop without looking at the board. It's just, it's very comfortable to me. So practice makes perfect, right? And then after I go with that initial run through, I put my hand on the front of the knife and I just rock through it. Get a nice rustic chop on my herbs. That's actually, uh, I've never seen, I've never seen that technique. Yeah, I like so that. I, um, you know, I've, I've been working for uh, like sports and entertainment food service for 11 years now. And uh, I find it's not like the fine dining restaurant world I originally came from. You need to find different techniques and different ways to teach people. So I found that that's like the simplest way. Yeah, that's cool. We is pretty good at this. <laughs> so I'm just keeping all mine in a little bowl because so, we're going to use this amount of cilantro in three different recipes that we're doing. All right. So I'm going to wipe down my board here. So we're going to take two, two tables. Actually, let's do, uh, since we did one cup of sour cream, we're going to do one tablespoon of that chopped cilantro. All right. He's doing all the cooking. Yeah. What? Um, maybe a little more. Can my boyfriend say hi? Yeah. Better. Come in. <laughs> he, to. he was he's working from home, but he wants to say hi to Hunter. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How are you? Man? How are you? Good. It smells good in here. I had to I had to stop and see what's cooking. Well, you just have to wait because in about a half hour, it's going to be like pure magic. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's a huge Royals fan. Yeah, go Royals. <laughs> All right. Well, then I'll just sneak away so you can talk to Hunter. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we get back playing soon. Hey, do you think you can beat uh, Solaire's home run record on a sh such a short season? I don't think anyone can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to take some serious work to pull that off. Yeah, that guy's that guy's <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a lime. And if um, Amanda, I saw you had that, that box grater, right? Jasmine and Kalia, don't worry about it yet. Yeah, I see Kalia knows the trick, right? To get all the juices out, you want to really press it. I like to put mine on the board. But with that box grater. <laughs> What's that? Nothing. Keep going. So we're going to take this lime and we're going to do about half of it. So a microplane works. There's a little cheese grater I have. Get out of here. Oh, save that and send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, one more. Can we just do one more picture? I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, save cool. Thank you. Save it. <laughs> Okay, we can continue now. Zoom meetings where dreams come true. I know. <laughs> so
So Hunter, did uh, have you talked to Nikki Lopez? Did he tell you we did one of these a couple weeks ago? Yeah, we yeah. Did. That's what you think. Really well. He enjoyed it. Yeah, they had a good time. Yeah, we had a good time. It was pretty. He like uh, I actually um, I reached out to him and asked him if I, if there was any dirt I could have on you. But <laughs> all love, man, just love. He told me you were a golfer. He told me about your family. Then he told me you're a big Dallas Stars fan. Yeah, that's a good team right there, keeping the secrets down low. Yeah. No, that I mean, that's I was just looking for the stuff like that, just conversation <laughs> starters, you know? Yeah. So I, uh, I used to live in Boston, and I was there during uh, Tyler Sagan's rookie year when they won the Cup. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of him. You guys are lucky to have him. Yeah, he's – we locked him down for a long time, so he's, he's going to be around for a while. Beautiful. So that zesting and that lime, it can go right in your bowl. And then you're going to take your knife and you're going to cut your lime in half this away. All right. Well, We're going to save that other half of lime for uh, when we make our guacamole. So you're just going to squeeze it right in. Get every So yeah, grate as much of that as you can in there. And then squeeze half the lime in. Just don't lose any skin there, Amanda. I know. That's the worst cut right there. He sliced, like, I don't even know how much skin off of his finger from uh, a mandolin in spring training. I yeah, will not like that. Fun. That was like 30 years ago. Yeah, it was bad. It was so bad. All right, so after that, I want you to season it with salt and pepper to taste. So some people are sensitive to salt. Some people aren't. I like to think more salt is better. It, it makes the food stay on the palate longer. So I'd say for this amount of sour cream, do about a, uh, a half a teaspoon of salt, a little more if you want a little extra, and uh, about an eighth, or, sorry, a quarter teaspoon of pepper. All right. And then, uh, like I said, if you have a round vessel, even eat, like just work it around with your spatula. You want to make it so there's specks of green throughout the entirety of the cream. Get that lemon juice worked in there. The salt crystals broken down a little bit. And this is like a super easy way to add a whole lot. I know most people when they have taco night or quesadillas, they just do straight up sour cream. I mean, Without the talking, that would take us, what, five minutes max to add a little extra flavor in there? That's a great idea. So this is something that you can make up to like two or three days ahead of time. You just don't want to wait any longer because that the lime juice will start reacting with the cilantro and it'll start getting black, you know? But I'm going to put mine in a little bowl here so when we, when we go to serve our quesadillas, we're ready to go. So uh, next we're going to do everybody's favorite, or at least in most households, guacamole. Um, Everybody likes to smash guacamole, so let's do it. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two avocados worth, just because snacks. I'm gonna use a half a tomato to add a little color. And then I'm gonna use an entire lime and I'm gonna save that half lime for when we make our pico de gallo. Sound good? Sound good. Great. Now this is another one of those um, instances where you can add heat to your guacamole. Some people like to add minced jalapenos, sriracha, any sort of hot sauce. It's your call. But this is just super basic yet flavorful way to do it. All right. Has everyone cleaned it up? Oh, I mean, it's all over it. You're like the avocado queen. <laughs> Actually, right. it makes 
Um, Kalia, you know how to cut open an avocado? No. No? Okay, let's do this. All right, once again, I've got my cut glove on just because I'm going to do this above the cutting board just to give you a little demo here. So I like to start up where the, where the top of the stem is, okay? And I go down to the, the pit, if you will, okay? And then I just kind of work it around that. Again, be super careful, okay? If you do it on a cutting board, it's a lot easier. But I just want to show you up close and personal. So I went all the way around, and I should have an even cut the whole way. I'm even going to backtrack with my knife to show you. All right? And then it's as simple as turning it clockwise or counter, like you turn the sides opposite ways. And they pop right apart. One side you have the seed or the nut, and then the other side is clean. Now, you can go in there with a spoon and pop out the seed like that. Or you can do it this old trusty way, which is stab it, turn it, and it's out. All right? <laughs> Just don't cut your hand off because I'm not covered right now. <laughs> All right? So there's another thing is, uh, you know, we're doing guacamole. It doesn't have to be pretty, right? It's, it's a paste. So you can go right ahead. I'm just going to use a fork and I'm just going to pop all this out right into a bowl. Now there is, you do want to make sure that that little, um, that little part at the top that kind of looked like a stem doesn't fall into your guacamole because you do not want to bite down on that. That, that could break a tooth. Wow. Put it in the white bowl. I just need it. So are we all doing two avocados or are we just doing one? Uh, we can do two. All right, let's do it. So where exactly uh, are you in Texas? Are you close to a major city? Dallas. We are like, Dallas? Okay. We're like 45 minutes north of Dallas. Gotcha. And that's where you grew up? Yeah. Okay. Amanda, yep. are you from there too? Yes. Nice. Yep. And uh, Jasmine, are you originally from Kansas City? I'm originally from Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. Yeah. I actually, uh, <laughs> myself and a couple of my coworkers, we went out and we went to the Royals game in Omaha last year. That was a lot of fun. Oh, nice. Amanda, I think that was right after you had the baby, right? Oh, yeah. I was right before. Oh, right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I see, uh, I'm like all over the stadium on game day. So I like run into the wives and the girlfriends all the time. They have no idea who I am, but I'm like, oh, that's, that's who that is. That's who that is. So I've seen you and the kids multiple times at the stadium. <laughs> uh, pretty much when Bodie was uh, right at like uh, freak out mode when he needed to go to sleep and leave the game. Yeah. Yeah, that happens, right? Every night at all the same time. <laughs> all right, so we've got our uh, we've got our avocado. Do we have both of them smashed or at least popped out of the skin into the bowl? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So next, I'm going to take a tomato. I want to add a little color to this whole scenario here. Um, I want to use half of this, so I'm going to cut it right down the middle. Actually, you know what, let's use a quarter of it. So I'm gonna, can you see what I'm doing here? I'm gonna cut it in half. Now this is where having a sharp knife really comes in handy because you don't wanna smash uh, tomato pieces all over the place. Or in some places you do wanna do that. Yeah, I got a sharp knife. I'm gonna pop my core out like this. I'm just gonna use this quarter of tomato. And as I cut this, I'm going to keep it on my cutting board because I don't want to add it to the guacamole just yet because I want it to keep its integrity. I don't want to mash it up so much. I want there to be nice chunks of tomato in there. So I like to cut my tomatoes in planks first, if you will, just nice like quarter inch slices. Then I stack them on top of each other. Uh, 
How's everybody doing out there? Great. Good. And again, you can use that same method of the, like the claw I showed you earlier with your hand, so you don't cut yourself. So like I said, I'm gonna keep these on the edge of my cutting board for right now, just so we don't smash them when we mix everything else. Um, now I'm gonna take some, I'm gonna take a little red onion. So I'm gonna take a quarter of a red onion. When I, when I cut my onions, I take the ed off, edge off first, or the top and the bottom, I should say. Cut it in half. Peel the skin off. How are we doing there, Team Big Brother? We good? Big Brother, Big Sister? <laughs> doing great. All right, so my little trick to dicing is in some, some items like the tomato where you had to cut it into planks first to get the squares, like onions already have the different layers, right? So we're just gonna cut into it a little bit. I'm gonna show you a little trick I do. I keep it attached at the end. Can you see that? Yeah. So I cut all the way through and I keep it attached at the end. That way we have something instead of our fingers holding it together at the end. So I go all the way across. And remember, I said we're gonna use a quarter of this onion. So I went halfway through that half I just had, if that makes sense. Yes. And then I just come right through and then I got little pieces like that. All right. Yeah, I got now, it. Now, some people I know don't like red onions, so you can omit this part from your guacamole, or you can cut it a lot smaller if you don't like that, that raw bite of onion. All right? Wait, I... You're making me nervous. Can you just cut it, like, not like that? <laughs> it's just making me nervous. Jasmine, you sound like me at work. <laughs> I have to do cooking demos or uh, knife workshop things oh, all the no, time no, with people. No, you're literally going to cut your hand. Just, just, you know how to cut it. Yeah. Hi, everybody. how you doing, buddy? Sorry. Hold on. Bodie, can you get me a lime? I need one more lime, buddy. You got one? Just can you get that out of the bag? Show me. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. So either give it to your mom or your dad, and we're going to try to squeeze it so we can get all the juices flowing in it. Can you do that? There you go. Good. All right. You're a natural. <laughs> In 16 years, you got a job with me, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you can do it with this one. All right, so we're going to use this whole lime in here because I like a lot of lime in my guacamole. Okay. So I'm going to squeeze both sides of the lime right, in, right over my avocado. Yeah. Kalia, how you doing, buddy? Good. Good? All right, so we're going to squeeze all that lime juice in there. And then if you want to get every last bit of it out, a good way to do it is, is to take a fork, put the fork right in there and turn it and you'll get every last bit out. Oh, I got it. You threw it. <laughs> It's all coming together. <laughs> all 
All right. So at this point, I would take a fork or a spoon, and I would go right ahead and mash up that avocado and lime juice. And then at this point, you can add your salt and pepper into there. How much lime was it? What's that? How much lime? I would do a full lime juiced. Oh, okay. Let's cut it in half. I'm cutting only half. Because with all that fat, that delicious fat from the avocado, you want to cut it with a lot of acid. All right, so once again, I'm going to do, we're going to stick with that uh, right around a, a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt to your liking. Again, the more, the more salt you add, if, you know, if you're doing it right, and once you uh, really learn your, your palate, mm -hmm. adding the right amount of salt, you can make food stay on your, on your taste buds longer. So really? that's a little trick. So everybody's favorite part where we just mash, 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 mash. And then you can add, once it's nice and uh, pureed, if you will, you can add a tablespoon or about, a, I'd say a half a tablespoon of the cilantro in there. That stuff that we already chopped up. You want to mix it? Yeah. That's guacamole. That's guacamole. Yeah. That a boy? Oh, right. Up the onion. Already loves guacamole. Yeah, they're already already. Here's onion and. Don't touch your eyes. Maybe wash it. Okay. Mom. Wash his hands. And like I said earlier, you can add uh, heat to this as well. Um, I'm going to add Cholula to mine. Sounds good. You can add jalapeno, whatever to your liking. We have the tomatoes too, right? We're gonna yeah. Once you have that, uh, the avocados and the lime juice nicely mashed up, where it's, I don't want to say smooth, but it's it, they're not they're in smaller pieces. That's when you can fold in your tomatoes and your onions. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm just smashing away here. Hunter, how's yours looking, man? Good. It smells good. I want to get a chip in. I know. I really want to try. We'll be there soon enough. Don't worry. We got one more little thing with knife skills, and then we're going to start building, all right? All right. Actually, two more things with knife skills. I want to add some extra flavor to this quesadilla. Is anybody on any sort of time constraints? Not really, no. All right, good. We'll do this till 10 p.m. <laughs> All right, guys, look right here. Look right here. Okay, so my avocado lime juice is pretty well mixed. Now I'm going to add in my tomato, my red onion. I'm going to fold it with a spatula or uh, with that fork, and then I'm going to set it aside, put it in the refrigerator for when we're ready to serve our quesadillas. But when you typically make um, guacamole, do you do you put onion and tomato in it, or are you guys strictly an avocado family? We do tomato, just like this. All right, cool. Should we put the onions in? Yep, you can fold the onions in when you add in the tomatoes. I'm going to add my hot sauce because I got to. All right, how's everybody doing? Great. Ready for the next one? Yep. So you've already mastered three recipes. Look at you, naturals. 
All right. So next we're going to make some pico de gallo. So I want you to take the remaining um, three quarters of a tomato that you had, right? Because we used a quarter of a tomato. And I want you to cut those tomatoes just like you cut them for the guacamole. I'm gonna taste test the guacamole. Oh yeah, you have to. Yeah, I keep, uh, I keep a bunch of plastic spoons right by the uh, stove so I can always taste everything. Because you're never going to know how good your food tastes unless you're trying it the whole time you're preparing it. So, so does anybody have any ideas for, uh, like, Hunter, do you want to call out one of your teammates? Do you want me to get somebody else I should cook with? Anything I should make? I mean, I, I want to keep doing this. It keeps me busy, keeps me sane. Yeah. Um... So you did one with Nikki, right? Yeah. Um, Keller actually popped into that one for a second, too. Who did? Keller. Keller, yeah, I was about to say. He'd be good. Um, <laughs> it would be really funny to get, like, O'Hearn and Cam Gallagher. They're living together. Those two are, uh, they're an interesting duo, aren't they? No, they're pretty funny. That would be, that would be hilarious. Are they, are they living up here? No, they're, uh, they're down here with me. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you, uh, you spread the word to them. You tell them whenever they're ready, I'm good to go. They just uh -huh. tell me what they want to make and we'll do it. So again, we're cutting the tomatoes just like we cut them for the guacamole. So that's going to be three quarters to a whole tomato, all depending on how much you want to make. No. We, did, we did have three quarters left, so it just makes sense to use the rest of that tomato, right? We're also going to use enough, that leftover quarter of onion that we had. And, and this time we don't have to do it in stages. We can drop the, uh, right in another bowl, you can put the tomatoes and the red onion, and then we're gonna add the other uh, additional ingredients after that. Okay. So that's one of the, the beauteous things about this type of cuisine is, um, you know, you go to the fine, the more fine dining restaurants and, and they have beautiful knife cuts and um, a lot of technique. Um, south of the border, like all those kind of South American countries, Mexico, and even into Italy, it's a lot more rustic cuts and it's all about the flavors more than the, the technique you put behind with your knife, you know? That's what I'm all about. I don't care if it looks good. I just want it to taste good. Is anybody crying from cutting these onions yet? No, I'm surprised I'm not. I know I am. So how are we looking? Are you, Amanda, you already done? Yeah. All right. If you ever need to come, if you're <laughs> bored when you're at the stadium, I'll come visit. I need some solid help every once in a while in the kitchen. So you're signed up. <laughs> I had to wash a bowl. So that's why I fell behind a little bit. I, I thought I had more than I did. So after the tomato, so we're doing three quarters to a whole tomato. 
and then that quarter of the red onion. And then we're going to add a tablespoon, which should be about what you have left of the cilantro. Is that true? Right around that much? So you can add that right in there. And then you've got that extra half of a lime. You can squeeze that in there. So all these ingredients, toss them together, salt and pepper to your liking. Again, very simple, but lots of fresh flavors. And I don't know if you can tell with my recipes yet, but I'm a little heavy on the onion. That's just my style. You can cut that back if it's too much for you. Some people just can't handle that raw onion flavor. So you see that that one little extra step we did of pulling that um, that extra cilantro and chopping it, it saved us through these three projects. We were just able to pull from that one batch instead of having to keep going back to the same project. In the kitchen, in uh, like classic French, we call that mise en place. You have to put it down on the thing. Everything in place. Talia, how you doing? Good. Just good. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Great. All right. Muscle through it. <laughs> all right. So again, uh, I'm going to add all these items I threw right in the bowl as I did them. Okay, then I'm gonna add my salt and my pepper. Um, again, this is another one. If you wanna take it to the next level, you can mince jalapenos, put those in there. Your call. So I'm going about, I like salt on fresh tomatoes. I mean, you really can't go wrong. I could sprinkle salt right on a tomato and eat it like an apple. Um, so I'd go about, <laughs> A half to a full teaspoon, and then a quarter teaspoon of pepper. So what's your favorite meal to cook? Both of y'all. Uh, I'll let you start, Kalia. Um, spaghetti. Spaghetti? Yeah. Nice. Any, any meat in the spaghetti? Yeah. Just, is it ground beef or turkey or? Yeah, ground beef. Yeah. Ground beef. Spaghetti sounds good. I like to cook pasta too. Like yeah. a, I like to make a homemade red sauce. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. What yeah, about I'm, uh, I worked in Mediterranean restaurants, so that's kind of my cup of tea too. I like the versatility of it. Uh -huh. um, but the thing also about Mediterranean is it encapsulates like 15 different countries. So there's like so much you can do in Mediterranean food. Yeah. What about you, Hunter? I love, I think, I love doing ribs on the smoker. Yeah, I really enjoy it. And they're normally a pretty good hit when we have some people over, so. Yeah, that's cool. What so, about you, uh, we, we can have them cut this out of the video, Hunter, but uh, <laughs> Texas or Kansas City barbecue? Honestly, uh, Kansas City. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm an East Coast guy. I grew up in New York, Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. So when I came out here five years ago, it was like I knew barbecue, but it was like a whole new world. I just learned more every day. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So uh, how's everybody doing? We got, we got our pico de gallo done. His eyes are burning. That's all right. <laughs> Don't cry. There's no crying in the kitchen. Onions, are, those are killers. Like, I know. Oh my God. All right, well then, then Jasmine, you have to do this next batch of cutting onions then. All right. We're gonna do, this is gonna be super fast, okay? We're gonna do some, we're gonna do some peppers and onions to put in the quesadillas, and then that's the last time we need the knife until we cut our finished product. All right? All right. So. One thing that we're big on at the stadium is um, we're, we try to minimize our food waste, right? So 
believe it or not, we've gone through, uh, I have training videos of the best way to cut a pepper and get the most yield out of it. Like it's, it's become part of our uh, everyday life. Yeah. So we just try to maximize, maximize, maximize. That's why I create these recipes. So you don't have a leftover tomato or a leftover half of a lime. We, we incorporate everything into the whole meal. So for a pepper, the, the way I find easiest to cut peppers is I, I cut them into four planks first. So I cut off that edge. I cut off that edge. Try, I try not to get all the ribs inside there. So I got the four sides of the pepper. Then I like to flip it on its side. I like to cut off that bottom part so you can utilize that. And then I cut off the top. So all I've left is this inedible middle part. Can you see that? And then I pop the stem out of this top part and we can use that whole part of the pepper. So a lot of people will just cut off the edges and forget the top and the bottom, but there's so much more usable pepper. Um, and again, I, I think once you cook them, any color bell pepper, pretty similar. Some are sweeter than others, but I'm a big fan of the red, even though they're the, I believe the second most expensive now behind the orange. Um, but I think just utilizing as many colors as you can when you cook, it's not only prettier, if you really break it down, it's healthier too. Yeah. So I would typically do one pepper and uh, like a quarter to a half of a, a red or a white onion. Um, but since we've already used red onion, I'm gonna continue using that second half. But I'm gonna do a half of a green pepper and a half of a red pepper just so I have extra flavor, extra color. So, we're gonna start with the, uh, with the peppers. So I, I just do one at a time. Some people stack them up, but I find that peppers are kind of slippery. I just do one at a time. And kind of like we did with the uh, cilantro earlier, I just kind of let the knife do the work and just push through it. This is my sister, Amber. Hi, Amber, welcome to the show. What's up? <laughs> She was the one banging on my door earlier. Oh, it happens. I didn't realize that this was happening at the same time. My bad. <laughs> it's all good. The her, more the merrier. Her and Kalia are going to do a TikTok. Uh-oh. Oh. Um, my, uh, my boss has become a, a TikTok warrior during this quarantine. It's, uh, it's, it's getting out of control, actually. Um, I think he needs an intervention. <laughs> he does it more than my 12 year old daughter. So that's funny. And believe me, he's going to be the first person who watches this video when it's done. So Troy, <laughs> you heard what I said. <laughs> so I cut these peppers about, I don't know, an eighth to a quarter of an inch thick. I find that if you, you know, if you, if you're sauteing, if you're roasting, you want to cut everything the same width because it's going to cook evenly. All right. So I'm doing my pepper strips and I'm going to show you how I cut an onion. I'm going to pop my kitchen door open here because it's a little warm. How's the weather in Kansas City? It's kind of cold today. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually, it's perfect. <laughs> it's nice and sunny. There was a little overcast earlier, but it's it's clearing up a little bit. I'd say it's in the low 60s, maybe low to mid 60s. Nice. Can you guys still hear me, or is my neighbor mowing the lawn getting the uh, air there? We can hear you. All right, so I've got my pile of pepper strips here, which we're gonna saute to add all that extra flavor into our quesadilla. 
Now I'm taking that other half of the red onion. We still have a half of a red onion, right? We just use that. Yeah, we actually chopped ours already. Oh, all right, all right. So again, peel the skin off. And this is how I, I like to, when I'm sauteing along with another vegetable, I like to do slices other than uh, dices for this. So I do the claw thing again, and then I just kind of, just like that, real quick. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, you can go, and the thing that's cool about onions is they, it almost gives you like a built-in guide. You see all those lines on there? If you go on those lines, I mean, you got the perfect slice, uh, size slice onions. And like I said, I've, I've cut, I've, I've raced myself. Uh, uh, see how fast I can peel and cut a case of onions on a slow day like I'm a dork like that it's how you hone your skills right good technique <laughs> so I'm gonna take my uh, saute pan and I'm gonna turn it on uh, about medium heat how's everybody's knife skills going over there good. quick as yours but that's all right. Lots of pre I guarantee um, I cannot hit a fastball if you put me on camera right now. So uh, I've never seen him chop this much ever. Well, then we're gonna maybe we make this a weekly thing. So uh, he gets to work instead of you, huh? You want to do My cat decided to join the show and she has tried to run outside. So the door is staying closed now. Okay. <laughs> Just go. You can go with her real fast. All right, so everything cut? Minutes. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so we're going to go medium heat, medium to high. I've, I mean, I've got electric here, so I've got it on a six right now. And I'm going to add about a tablespoon of oil. Vegetable, in this case, I think vegetable works the best. How's uh, Kalia's eyes doing? She's still crying? <laughs> she, yeah, she just went to wipe them again, but she's good. All right. So when I was in culinary school, but, you know, everybody has little tricks to stop stuff. I worked with this one guy who um, he would hold a piece of bread in his mouth when he cut onions and he swore that stopped it. I, I don't know the science behind that, but it worked for him. Did you try it? No, because I think it's foolishness. I think some people are sensitive. Some onions are stronger than others. I don't know, but he believed in it and it worked for him. Maybe it was just the power of the mind. I know the mind. Yeah. So once, uh, once your pan is just about at the point of smoking, you're going to want to add the peppers and onions right in there, okay? All right. And you're going to hear that lovely, lovely sizzle, hopefully, when they hit. One of the greatest sounds in the world. Yeah. And uh, again, season to your liking. Um, I'm a little heavy on uh, salt, like I said earlier. So I would say about a teaspoon of salt because as this cooks, a lot of that, uh, the water that's naturally in these vegetables is going to evaporate. So you're going to get a lot less in the end. So I'd say about a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and then just to add a little extra flavor, I'm, I like to add chili powder. So if you have some chili powder, let's throw some in there. And I'd say you can, you can go with about a, a quarter to a half a teaspoon, depending on how strong you like. <laughs> 
So while we're uh, while we're waiting for that to start sauteing, uh, we can kind of build our preliminary part of our quesadillas. So a lot of people, you know, now they sell that Mexican cheese blend, the, the finer stuff that melts really well, and it's uh, like Colby and cheddar mixed together. Um, you can buy that stuff. You can make your own combo. So me personally, I've got. I found some hot habanero cheese and mild cheddar. So I'm just gonna do like a half and half mixture. So you can go ahead and if, if you have multiple types, you can mix them together. You just have one. Um, my veg is starting to go. So Hunter, now you have, uh, now that she's off camera, now you have a, a recipe, You up. Oh, she's back. Mother's Day, Monday. I mean Sunday. You can make this for her. you. Got it. I got it. You got it. Did you, Amber? We have enough for the two minute span that you restrained us on. What? What do you mean? Could go deeper, but what kind of cheese you going with, Amanda? No, it's fine. Jalapeno pepper jack. Good for you. Nice. It's better than what we did have. Yeah. She did good. So, do you guys as a family do a lot of spicy stuff? No. No. Brody doesn't like spicy, really. We, Hunter and I would, we love spicy what stuff. Did you want to? Do? Do you can't really. I'll do one with you. Yeah, so my, uh, when my kids were young, they loved spicy food. Like, my daughter was probably four and there was an Indian restaurant by our house in Massachusetts and she wanted to go there all the time and she would just crush spicy food. Oh, and, then, and then she started getting her mother's taste buds and she started not liking spicy food, but yeah. now she's back to it again. Like, I think it's just because of the whole, uh, like the, uh, what are those things called? Taki, the Taki craze. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that brought it back for a lot of the youngsters. Yeah, for sure. In our, my generation, it was the flaming hot cheetos. Oh yeah. <laughs> how's the uh, sauteing going back there? Kalia, how's the sauteing? Brown. How's your sauteing going? Good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what kind of cheese are we using up there, Jasmine? Um, I got pepper jack and cheddar. All right, so. awesome. So I would just mix half and half, and I just have mine sitting in a bowl. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna lay out my quesadilla, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it, or my tortilla, I should say. Okay. You want pepper jack? You need more chips. Once you have your cheeses mixed. And again, I'm still sauteing away on my veggies. So the thing that's beautiful about quesadillas is you don't have to, uh, you don't have to like make fresh vegetables for this project, right? Like whatever you had earlier this week, your leftovers, you can chop up and you can make into a vegetable medley and put inside here. So it, it's a good like kitchen sink recipe, if you will. So I have a 10 inch tortilla. I don't know if you have 10 or 12 down there, but- um, Do one of those and one of these for yours. Let me find my- uh, These are probably the ones. Oh wait, I'm, I just want, <laughs> oh, that's spicy. I have jalapenos in that. So you can, uh, you can either, if you like a little bite, in your vegetables you can you can pull them off before they're like fully fork tender and that way they'll almost steam inside of the quesadilla or you can cook them all the way which is what i'm going to do i like mine to have like no bite at all to them plus i like to get as much of that liquid out of there as possible that way when you uh when you make the quesadilla you don't have a lot of liquid dripping out the sides so do you get two tortillas? Sorry, I missed that. No, we're, I'm, well, do you have a, did you get 10 inch or 12 inch? We have. I don't know. 
It looks like a 10. Okay, so I find the, the easiest way to make these and the cleanest way is to just use one tortilla and fold it over. So you take it, I'm gonna show you in a second, we're gonna place cheese on one side, then we're gonna fill it with our filling, and then we'll just fold over like that, and then we'll saute it like that. Cool. Sound good? Yeah. All right, how's everybody's vegetables doing? Good. All right, mine are just about done. I'm gonna pull them off. Now, one thing that you can do is either, once they stop cooking, you can drain off a little bit of that excess liquid if you have it, or you can pat dry them with a paper towel. That way when we cook them, you're not gonna be leaching out a lot of liquid, all right? So on your half of tortilla, you wanna take a half a cup, we all have 10 inch tortillas, so this should work out. A half a cup of your cheese mix, you place it on one side, so you're filling half the pizza pie, if you will. You spread it out all the way to the edges. But you only want to go on half of it. Look good? Okay. And again, this is where you can get creative. You can try... I mean, you can make, you, you both said you like making breakfast stuff. You can do breakfast quesadillas. You can put anything in this. It's a great um, vessel to move around any sort of food. So cool. we're gonna, you can either have, you either cook the veggies earlier or you go right from the pan onto here, which will start the, the uh, melting of the cheese process, which will make it super gooey delicious. All right, so I've got my tongs. I'm going to go right on top. And this is about, uh, I'd say maybe a, a quarter to a half of a cup of the vegetables. Um, at the stadium, we have, uh, we have two different types of quesadillas that we sell in our rivals chop house out in right field. And, uh, we have like a corn and black bean salsa that we put inside of it, which is super good. Um, and we do this same chimichurri steak. So this recipe that we made today, minus the corn and black bean salsa, you can find when you go to the stadium. And then we also have a chicken bacon ranch in there that we sell. All right, so I kept the veggies on top of the cheese on that one side. I'm gonna fold it over, press down. And then, I only have one saute pan, so give me a hot second here. All right, so this is where we're gonna take you can either use butter or oil. We are, we've been using oil all day, so let's just stick with it. You can do, uh, in that same hot pan, if you still have it, a tablespoon of oil. And if you have that large saute pan like I have, it's perfect because you'll be able to flip the quesadilla almost like an omelet. Now, a thing that's beautiful about this too is you can make these up to this point like three days ahead of time, right? And then you pull them out as you need them and you can toast them. So Amanda, with, with the little kids, I mean, you can, you can stockpile these for a week. You know, every couple of days make them and then just fire them. You, you can even do them in the microwave if you don't want to toast them. Yeah, that's a great idea. Super easy, and and Kalia, you could or you could save your trips to McDonald's. You have these in the fridge. Boom. Yeah. yeah. All right. So once your pan is hot again, you can go right in there. You having fun yet? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, 
Kalia, what TikTok video are you doing? Um, we're going to do the, the Drake one. The left foot up. Classic. Oh, yeah. Slide. Uh-huh. Amanda, you've been doing TikTok? Oh, yeah. All right. It happens. It happens. No, I haven't yet, but I enjoy watching them. Yeah, they're pretty funny. Yeah. All right, so you want to get a nice, uh, if you start with a hot pan, it goes pretty fast. Um, I wasn't paying attention. I shut off my stovetop, so bear with me. I did too. All right, it happens. But if you look on the edges of it, you can really see the, uh, the little oil bubbles popping up, and you know it's getting to work. Sorry. So, uh, was there anything that we did that needs any more, uh, like discussion or description? It was all pretty easy, right? Yeah. 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 So, Kalia, you think you could teach your family and friends this? No problem. Yes. All right. Cool. We just we'll have to uh, maybe we'll get you uh, an eye mask or something so the onions don't bother you next time, <laughs> or a fan working over your hands. <laughs> They have these goggles you can wear. Sunglasses, maybe. <laughs> so, I know that we uh, the original plan to do this Monday was because we wanted to have this released by Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. But but then even before you had your meeting, we um, there was something else that came up, so we had to we were gonna not have it out till tomorrow anyway. So. Oh, okay. It's it's a uh, it's gonna be a siete de de mayo meal. All right. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna flip mine over. I think it's ready. Um, I would use a rubber spatula if you have one, or rubber or metal spatula. Um, I'm gonna use a tong, just tongs because I'm just comfortable using them. Nice. Get a little nice uh, brown crispiness on there. Now, when you flip it over, even if it's not that crispy and it has that uh, that browning, because you flipped it over, it's now releasing that steam. So that top part's going to get crispy for you. You use So uh, is this is this what we're having for dinner, or do you have other plans? We're gonna do this for dinner. Yeah, this is what I'm having. Me too. <laughs> awesome. Um, we have big plans for Mother's Day, or is it top secret? We're gonna go to uh, um, my parents' house. Okay. Yeah, my brother and his wife and their kids. They live in Houston. They're driving up this weekend, um, and then we're all we're gonna all go over there. Very cool. Very cool. All right, mine's getting pretty close to being ready to be pulled off here. I think ours is done. You're done? Yeah. Yeah, mine's mine's uh golden brown delicious, as we say in the business. There I don't know if you can see that. That looks delicious. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. All right, so what I like to do when I pull it off the stove is, at least at the stadium, we do um, we do four cuts. You can do six, you can do whatever. But I think four cuts, and then you can either have everything on the side, or you can jazz them up like they're tacos, like a stuffed taco, right? All right, so I'm going to cut mine like so. Cut it in half. And then I'm going to cut each half in half. Oh, shoot. Okay. And then I'm going to do some sort of pretty awesome. restaurant presentation here, if you will. Okay. 
Oh, look at his. So that's my finished product. Wow, yummy. I do this for a living. <laughs> so the one thing that we didn't do, but you can do on your next round is the, uh, the flank steak. Yeah. You know, it's, it's marinating. You, you cook it to the, the right doneness that you enjoy, and then you slice it thin. After you pull it off the grill, I'd let it wait for about 10 minutes so the juices kind of redistribute, and then slice it, and you can place it right on top of those vegetables before it goes in the pan. It's going to be fantastic. How's the flavor? Really good. Yeah? Oh, I haven't tried mine yet. <laughs> what do you think of the, uh, the simple thing of making that cilantro lime sour cream really is a game changer? Yeah, that is no, a game changer. So good. With the flank steak, do you? It, it's hot. You get the grill hot. Well, you you can uh, yeah. I so I would uh, you can either grill it right before you're you're building these, or you can do it a day ahead of time, hours ahead of time. And if you do like a, a lower heat on the the quesadilla, like less cheese, less veg, that'll heat up. You won't get that much liquid in there. All right. Or you can take if you if your uh, steak is cold in a separate saute pan, I would just get that hot and throw them on there real quick, like they're a hibachi, you know, just tss, tss, then pop them right in your quesadilla. Okay. All right. What do you think, Jasmine, how is it? Very good. Good? Leah liked it too. Leah, are you a fan? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, I appreciate you all having the time to do this with me, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, no. thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I think we're gonna, they're probably gonna edit this down, it'll go out. So you'll be internet famous if you aren't already. <laughs> and uh, like, I'm serious. If you want to do this again, or if you have friends that want to do it, Hunter, if you know any players that are interested, let's do it. Let's keep the fans, the community that are stuck inside, keep them engaged and let's have fun. All right. All right? Well, thank you so much. Be safe out there and uh, we'll do this again sometime. Thank you. Right. Nice.